Andreas, can you tell us what risks do women face who have FCS if they're becoming pregnant? In occasions, not to say frequently, when somebody, when a female gets pregnant and she has familial calomacronemia syndrome, particularly the third semester at the end of the pregnancy, it's normal, even if you don't have this condition, for your triacylglycerides to go up. If you have this condition or if you have a predisposition, you may develop the condition, you may develop pancreatitis, and it may be the first time that this female, this patient, is being diagnosed with FCS. So it's interesting to see that somebody comes in the third trimester with high elevation, very high elevation of triacylglyceride levels, third trimester, and we're making the diagnosis for the first time. So again, it's normal. Many patients will develop what we call physiological, meaning it happens frequently and it's completely expected in the third trimester. But if you have an underlying condition that predisposes you, it may trigger an episode of bad pancreatitis. So if I'm a woman and I develop pancreatitis in my third trimester, if it's FCS, what would be clues as far as the degree of elevation of my triglyceride? So if it's three to 400, should I quiz my doctor that I may have FCS? Or are we looking way over 1,000, and that should be a clue to FCS? We're looking way, way, way over 1,000, and uh, what we frequently see is that it's above the detection, the upper detection limit. So that's usually what we see. The other thing that we frequently hear, it's a phone call from the lab telling you that the blood looks a little bit like a milkshake, that it's very lipemic. So that should be another clue that there's something wrong with the triacylglycerides. But when you see this patient, it's not a little bit of an elevation, it's gonna be in the thousands.